Today we're visiting Dr. Bruce Dunn to learn about his plant breeding program. Hey Bruce, tell us a bit about your program. Hi Kim, thanks for coming out. Uh, for this program we've got about six different genera that I work on, mm -hmm. uh, mainly looking at drought tolerance, uh, other plants that might, could be for flowers or could be for growth habits. And you're working mainly with uh, herbaceous perennials, right? Yeah, herbaceous perennials, uh, I prefer that they you know, be perennial, that they're going to come back, but also we'll work with annuals as well. And how did you identify this, the groups of plants you want to work with? Uh, yeah, so mainly it's, like I said, it's uh, drought tolerant material. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it just depends on uh, the flower colors uh, that, that we're interested in, as well as you know, some plants that are native and also mm -hmm. some non-native plants as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Mainly looking at traditional breeding with these. Uh, mm -hmm. So just making uh, traditional crosses between parents. Okay. Now when you've identified a group that you want to work with, where do you get started uh, as you initiate a, a program? Yeah, so initially that's the hardest part is uh, actually deciding you know, which plants that you want to work with. Maybe there's mm -hmm. something that you've worked with uh, for a while in your garden, something that catches your eye, uh, something that you think that you can maybe improve on. Maybe it's the flower color. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the flowers later on, maybe it's not winter hardy, but there are species that are winter hardy. So you can try to uh, cross those parents together mm -hmm. and try to get both of those traits uh, together. Okay, so you need to um, collect the material you want to work with and I imagine that could be rather extensive. <laughs> yeah so it depends on the genera uh -huh. so you know something like these uh, rain lilies here mm -hmm. uh, you know you maybe have 30 uh, to 40 different species mm -hmm. uh, other ones like this uh, glaucum here mm -hmm. you've got two different species so it's a lot easier once you collect those two species there's not a lot of uh, different combinations that you can make with these, okay. uh, but it is, you know, once you collect those, you've had those two species. So you bring in all the seed from those species and start growing out the plants. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of times, uh, you know, you can, you can collect this stuff, uh, find it through the web, and that's mm -hmm. generally all the, the species that are already in cultivation, so they're probably um, already selected for a reason. Uh, other ones like this Lichenus, or this uh, Lichenus that we've got back here, or these wallflowers here, there's multiple species. You may have a genera that's got about 180 species, so it's hard to collect all of those. Yeah. But you do want to find the ones that maybe already are established, those species, and then make crosses among those and work from there. Okay. So once you have a group collected, like here we have uh, some mallows, how do you identify what plants to start working with? We have great diversity here. Yeah, that's a good question. So just because we have them in the greenhouse and they look good, it's not how they're going to behave or perform out in, uh, in the field as well. So we like to plant them out in the field, look at them for a year or two, see which ones flower. Again, you know, which ones come on, disease resistance, um, drought tolerance, those kind of things. And then you select among them, find out which ones make good parents okay. and make crosses among those. And when you're ready to start developing new um, characteristics and new cultivars, there's a couple of different techniques that you can use. You mentioned traditional breeding. Right, so traditional mm -hmm. breeding, so just mm -hmm. making crosses, you find two different plants that again you want to combine the traits from either one of those plants. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other side of it, then you can also do uh, chemical mutagenesis. Okay, let's look at some of those plants. All right, sounds good. Well Bruce, explain what mutagenesis is. Yeah, so mutagenesis is basically creating mutants and there's a couple different ways. You can either use chemical mutagens or you can use uh, radiation as well. Okay, which techniques do you use? Yeah, so I use chemical mutagens, something like uh, EMS, ethyl methyl sulfonate. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty hazardous chemical, so you want to make sure and use gloves, uh, any kind of respirator, work under the hood whenever you're working with this chemical. Okay, um, and you apply that to the plants or the seeds? Yeah, so, so for this chemical itself, we'll apply it to the seeds. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So generally is what we'll do is we'll get a group of seeds, uh, go ahead and put them in tea bags so that we can kind of keep track of the seeds in the solution. We'll okay. soak them for either one day or two, depends, mm -hmm. depending on the seeds. Kind of depends on the seed coats on okay. it. The harder the seed coat, generally soak it a little bit longer. Okay. And depending on how long you soak it, it kind of depends on how many plants you'll get back. Mm -hmm. And that chemical causes the chromosomes to pretty much rearrange and you get some odd characteristics coming out. Right, so it actually causes a nucleotide uh, mm -hmm. exchange in it, so it's changing up that, that DNA just slightly. Okay, so here's an example of some treated and untreated, correct? Right, so yeah, if you don't treat the seeds, you get something like this, pretty large seedlings. We can see here that this distorted look. Also on the leaves here, so we have different colors of the green showing mm -hmm. up and pretty shorter plants, yeah. uh, pretty stunted plants. So we know that those were treated with a chemical. And from here, uh, we want to grow those out to see what types of traits um, as the plant matures uh, 
what sort of mutated traits might evolve, right? Right, because mm -hmm. just because what we see here doesn't necessarily translate, it may outgrow some of these traits okay. once we get them to the field. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, and, and only what we're seeing, you know, you can see definitely see the leaf distortions on here, uh, mm -hmm. but also there may be other traits that it affects, like the flower color, right. growth habit, size uh, it could of be, the yeah, it could be winter hardiness, mm -hmm. size of the plant, those kind of things. So we need to grow it out in the field later. Mm -hmm. So you have some examples that are a little bit farther down the line, right? Right, so once we get those, we'll select out, mm -hmm. you know, ones that we think have some kind of, uh, you know, mutagen uh, effect on those, grow them out. We can see differences here. This is catch fly or lichenis. We can see this is mm -hmm. uh, the original plant, and then we can see a mutant here that's okay. got some chlorophyll uh, problems yeah, going nice on with it as well. Golden color. Right. Here you have a variegation. Right, so this one, so this one over here, so this is the original plant, and then we can see here that that treated seed, and it's got the, the white margins mm -hmm. uh, variegation associated with it. I imagine you want to make sure that like this plant, for example, can actually survive on its own outside. Right, because yeah, again, it doesn't have quite the chlorophyll that this right. one does. Mm -hmm. So definitely plant it out, same as that traditional breeding. So we mm -hmm. want to evaluate it for uh, at least a couple of years and see how it does in the soil conditions as well as the climatic conditions. Okay. Once you've identified a, a very interesting trait, um, you'd like to carry that plant further, what's the next step? Yeah, so then you got to propagate it. So once you have your population, you're trying to find that one in a million plant out there, you've got it, uh, then you need to be able to mass produce it because just having one plant is not going to do you any good. So, so generally we'll asexually propagate it. We might be able to take seed from it, but we want to make sure that if it is from seed that that trait is going to carry on to that population. I imagine the large majority of our ornamental plants are produced from asexual propagation because they have these strange mutations. Right, yeah, so again, that's a good thing with, uh, with the ornamentals because once we find a, a plant that we like, we can just asexually propagate it and we've kind of fixed that trait automatically. Well, Bruce, how long does this process take of, you know, starting to identify the plant, what kind of traits you want to look for, and carrying it through the entire breeding process. Yeah, we're probably talking about at least five to ten years here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's going to probably take you at least a year just to collect all the, the different species or collect your germplasm, make crosses. It depends on your plants, too, as to how uh, soon that they flower. Hopefully you choose something that, again, from seed will flower within one year, but if it's a biennial, maybe two years. If it's yeah. a woody plant, maybe it's you know three or four years before it actually flowers. Mm -hmm. Save that seed, you plant those out, you may have to make other crosses among those or treat those seeds. So yeah, somewhere between at least five to ten years. Wow, it's quite a process, but um, always exciting to see something new turn up, I'm sure. It's what I enjoy. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Thanks for coming.